These three interior designers have been given a photograph of an empty formal dining room. They have free reign to design it in any way they please. I'm Nas. I'm an interior designer, and I would say that my style is colorful and layered and a big eclectic mix of styles. I'm Eric, and my design style is warm, earthy, and inviting. Hi, my name is Mandy, and my design style is California modern with touches of vintage and organic materials. No clients, no restrictions, just blank space. So at first looking at the space, it feels like there's warmth already, but the windows look a little small, the door feels a little bit small, and it just overall needs some character. So as I'm looking at the space, I am so drawn to the backyard, I'm so drawn to the land outside these windows, but the windows are so baby tiny, so I wanna bring more glass. Like, I want there to be more here. In the original space, I love the wood finishes in it, and I really love that you can see the outdoors. I love seeing the trees out there. It feels like this home is kind of nestled in a very green, like, foresty area. And I do like the vaulted ceiling and kind of the unique architecture of the room. So in the original space, there are these small windows that aren't really doing much for the space. And I thought the wall was such a focal point that adding some stack back doors that were louvered was really going to allow some more light to come in and just make the space connect to the exterior so that it really felt like you were living in the outdoors and indoors all at once. I love large openings for like doors and passages because it makes the space feel grander. So with the doors here, I really wanted to take them up as high as possible where it was just going to completely open up the space and make you feel like you were outdoors at all times when you're having dinner. So in the original design, the windows are, they're just a little weird to me. Like what's with the little box under one window? They feel a little small. They're kind of a strange shape given the size of the room. So I really want to open them up, get rid of the weird box and make this whole room feel a little bit more indoor outdoor. So I'd like to blow out those windows, add a bifolding door and build a deck. So you could kind of imagine like dining inside, being able to easily navigate outside or if you have kids, they can run out and play and you can keep an eye on them and it really just makes this room feel like an indoor outdoor flow. A design aesthetic that I love is just mixing wood species. I feel like in nature you see a whole bunch of different types of trees together and they look really pretty together. So I love mixing wood tones and given that the original space has a pretty kind of medium toned wood I would like to add more of it. So I really love this backyard. I love the idea of there being more to see over here. The windows are great. They're tall, it's a really tall wall, but I wanna make everything bigger. I wanna make the windows larger and I wanna make them more interesting. I love the pitch of this vaulted ceiling here and I wanna repeat that and play with that form in the windows on this wall. And then all of this wood, like all the muntins, all the ways that the glass gets broken up, which interrupts the view, we're just gonna do pure glass, like just straight up glass and tons of it. I am going to put curtains around my bifolding door because I can tell that once I open up that wall and add this detail around the bifolding doors, it's probably going to feel a little bit sterile. So I'm gonna add curtains. I'm thinking kind of like a light powdery blue and I'll mute it a little bit and that way it will kind of class up the space. Well, I don't like the door. The door is sad, it feels off center, it doesn't feel like related to anything. You can also see the door is actually like shorter than the window height over here. That feels a little bit silly. So I'm thinking that for this area in the back of the dining room, I wanna open that up. I wanna make the light come through. So I'm gonna do another house shaped window that echoes everything happening on the right hand wall. The dining room, I want it to stay cozy, which means that the walls don't open in my little dining room. So they're just gonna be windows. When I originally saw the door, it just kind of fell out of place and I wanted to give it purpose. So I wanted to give an illusion of the house continuing and connecting to the rest of the spaces. So it just continues and it makes the space feel even larger. Initially. I was just gonna change the door and remove it and just create a hallway, but then the scale wasn't right with the rest of the room. So opening it up a little bit more was just gonna make it feel a little bit more approachable. And there's also a curiosity to it where you kind of want to go around the corner and see what's next. Obviously, 
there's so much potential in this space for us to do something really gorgeous with the walls. I myself am also into the idea of doing something that feels expressionist and painterly, but environmental all the way up onto the ceilings too. And I'm thinking something that has more of a botanical energy, something that has a little bit more of an earthy color tone would be good. So I personally think that this Pierre Frey wallpaper is gonna be the vibe. Like, you know, like I love that there's like a gouache watercolor kind of energy to the print on this. You can really see like the brush strokes, which is beautiful. And then all of the earth tones really vibe for me with the backyard. It's like kind of giving like a really colorful plant hug. So originally the walls were kind of plain and simple and I wanted to introduce a new element in the space, a new material that was gonna warm it up and really create a focal point. I decided to add stone to the wall to make it a feature. Right now the walls were feeling a little bit too clean. So by introducing the stone, again, it's very important for me to bring the exterior interior. So adding that stone to the wall just creates that element of, again, durability and something that just feels heavy and grounded and it becomes such a good focal point in the space. So this is the wallpaper that I've selected and it's gonna go on this wall here. Because I'm opening up this wall and making it a big bifolding door, I want this wall to be kind of like the backdrop of it all. So I chose this really fun, modern wallpaper print. But what I love about it is the colors of it are really warm and rich and fun. And I love that it is hand drawn. So it just kind of adds to like the whimsical nature of it while still being a like rigid square linear pattern. So I'm obsessed with this wallpaper, but she's a lot. Like this is a lot of patterns. So I have this idea of adding additional wood paneling onto the walls that sort of takes what's so beautiful about the ceiling. And we're gonna have wallpaper intercut with all of the wood detail on that ceiling. I love the idea of dragging that down onto the walls all the way around the room. That feels like a way of almost like breaking up how energetic the wallpaper is into something that has more form and more formality so that it feels a little bit more digestible. In the original room, there were our beams already here. So I want to enhance the ceiling a little bit more by really cladding the entire space. This way it's going to allow the room to really feel grounded. And since I want to take out the entire right hand side and add the windows, that's going to allow the balance between the contemporary windows and then the ceiling just feeling a little bit more old world and making it a little bit more cozy and warm. So I really love the texture that we have going on on the ceiling. I mean, I'd like to continue that. So I would like to continue putting wood where you currently see the drywall. That way it kind of just feels like you're sort of like in an upside down tree. I and mean, I love that feeling. It just makes it feel a little bit more intimate and cozy. I am going to remove the wood floor because since I am doing the ceiling and cladding the entire ceiling in wood, I feel like the balance is going to be off and there's something beautiful about the mixture of the two, the wood and the concrete that are going to play really nice together. So to continue this idea of like warmth and coziness and like a sophisticated intimate space, I changed the stain color of the floors. I made them just a little bit darker so they feel a little bit more rich and sophisticated. I think the thing that I'm not like about these floors is there's just no energy to it. Like it feels tired. It feels like a floor that just came with the house and you didn't really choose it. I wouldn't choose it. I love the idea of going with a more active grain in an oak hardwood. I'm actually thinking like we've got a couple of different options here, but something kind of in the way of this for the paneling married to a very dark and rich oak floor would be really exciting. I'm gonna do a herringbone. It's rectangles, but they all come together. It's such a beautiful way to do rectangular wood boards, but in a pattern that makes it really energetic. And I like the idea of the herringbone shape also echoing the vaulted ceiling and also echoing the little doghouse shape windows. So we're just doing a lot of angles. We're serving angles. So I have this lovely rug. This is an example of the beautiful rug that I've laid out on the dining room floor. And what I love about it is that it is a really lush pile, but you could imagine it not being too fluffy that you can't have like a dining table and chairs on it, but it just feels very luxurious. And it ties in so nicely with this wallpaper color the paint and the wood tones that we've got going on here. 
here. I chose a rug. Not everyone likes a rug under the dining table. Sometimes people think of crumbs. Sometimes people think of spills. I love the warmth and the energy that putting a rug under the table creates. So this rug that I'm thinking of, it's like sort of traditional, but if you look closer at it, there's like fuchsia blobs in it. It's by a designer in New York called Jan Koth. I'm obsessed with all of their rugs where they basically take a traditional antique, you know, it could be oriental, it could be Persian, like whatever. They take these amazing motifs and then in their design, it's like you spilled paint all over it. And then since I already spilled paint all over the rug, then who cares if the red wine ends up next? For the dining table, I want to use something that's really grand and that's going to make a statement because it is going to be one of the focal points in the room. I want to use a material that, again, is very durable. Travertine is not only durable, but it's also antibacterial. It will, again, never feel dated. So it stays in theme with being able to move the furniture outdoors and vice versa, bringing it indoors. So one of the things that's really important to me in a dining space, no matter how big it is, is that you have somewhere to put your platters, you have somewhere to put all of the shared drinks. So I'm thinking of a credenza. I love the idea of using the Studio Bohem piece. I am absolutely obsessed with it. I've wanted to use it forever. And it's so freaking beautiful, right? Like it's so geometric, but it's so curvy and fun. And this is gonna be the place where I'm able to put all of the wine and the champagne and the sparkling water carafe and the still water carafe. So the dining table is just kind of an extension of the idea of wanting this room to feel approachable and comfortable. So I chose a oval shape shaped dining table without any harsh corners or anything. It just feels like anybody could walk up and sit down, including children. On top of that, by adding, you know, the wood base, again, it kind of just grounds it and makes it feel a little more approachable. It's not too stuffy, but then having a marble top just adds to the sophistication and kind of classes it all back up. So let's talk about the dining table. When I'm looking at this room, I see a very linear space. So I really truly think that a rectangular linear table makes the most sense in the space. So I'm thinking something that's kind of like sort of roughly this size. This table by Yoon Kook Park is so freaking beautiful. I love how impractical and oversized the legs are, but it's still actually like a very traditional rectangle shape. So for the chairs, adding in another color of wood. So this is just unfinished white oak with the chairs and a blue velvet that I sourced that ties in nicely with this wallpaper and the curtains. And then the side chairs I did in like a gray leather. And I mixed and matched it just to continue with the layering, making it feel like an easy space to go into and hang out in. It doesn't feel stuffy, but the chairs themselves are really beautiful. Can you tell all of my clients have young kids? It's like all I think about. I care a lot about kids running into corners. So a lot of the things that I source are round and don't have sharp corners or edges for that reason. So for the dining chairs, I want to find something that feels feels old and that feels patinaed and that has character. So again, introducing wood to play with what's already going to be existing from the stone to the concrete will be a really nice balance. So I'm thinking almost like an old Windsor chair, which is like a really gorgeous traditional Americana and English shape for a dining chair, doing that, but like making it kooky pants because that's what we did with our table. So I'm thinking like wiggly energy kind of makes sense. There's something about it that reminds me of the wallpaper. So these chandeliers are apparatus chandeliers. I love them because of the milk glass, the brass texture on them. And rather than doing one chandelier, I wanna do two because this room is so long, my table will also be quite long. So rather than one chandelier coming down and just lighting the center of it, I want the whole table to be evenly lit. So I've decided that I would like two of them evenly spaced over the whole table. Something that's really important to me in a dining room is having lots of different options for light. I think lighting is so important in developing and establishing a mood and an energy for the meal that you're serving. So I'm thinking of adding lots of different sconces all over the place. There's this one sconce, it's a vintage piece that they're hands that hold light balls. 
I'm obsessed. I think they're so amazing. I've always wanted to use them. So I have those kind of surrounding the perimeter of the room. They're very subtle. The only subtle thing in the room. With lighting, I want to be very intentional and make it feel very moody and ambient lighting. So I didn't want to put a big chandelier over the dining table. I want to make sure that I source something that's going to feel like they're there, but they're not really in the space so that when you walk in, you're not really focusing on the lighting fixtures. You're going to be more focused on the dining chairs, the table, and your surroundings. And then I was looking around for, I don't know, I'm thinking like a light fixture over the table, a chandelier, so to speak, that has the same hand energy. I recently saw that artist Chris Walston released this giant chandelier that's literally just like a mess of arms and hands holding balls in different directions. So the wall sconces, I just made up. I'm gonna have to get them custom made. I love them because they are just going to be kind of an ambient glow against the wallpaper. The linear vertical lines are kind of just, you know, they tie into this wallpaper really well. And by having those shadow lines, it just kind of accentuates that grid formation. I think that a lot of people really enjoy how a space feels when it's lit with wall sconces without realizing that that's what it is. I and mean, it's that ambient glow without it kind of, you know, being so harsh over your face. I also want to put something in this corner. I just, I think the corner needs something. I love really tall floor lamps. This one is so kooky. It's from Rem Atelier, I think is so amazing. I love that it kind of like does this and it's made out of clay, I think. So I'm choosing a green because the green feels again, really botanical. It reminds me of a lot of the colors outside the windows. So since I might be changing the structure and, and the architecture of the door, there has to be another element back there that's really gonna draw your eye. So I'm thinking I might add an olive tree that again feels like it's just natural, it belongs there. There is a lot of wavy furniture and decor out there right now, and I really love it. The mirror is just a fun piece that helps to make the room feel a little more fun and funky and like whimsical. I clad it in wood so that it still feels like it's tied into the space. I wouldn't be complete without something on the table that sits there all the time, even when I'm not serving a meal, that is still also an art moment. So I'm gonna go with this bowl that I've admired for so long from Rogan Gregory. He's one of my favorite contemporary artists who lives in Los Angeles. And it's this like amazing cast bowl. Overall, I want the color story to feel warm, cozy, neutral, but really have the materials drive the entire design. And with the art piece, I wanted to really stand out, again, create contrast without taking away from the rest of the pieces or the finishes. One of my favorite artist is Ross Blackner. He's a great American designer that still lives in New York and I really want to find a piece that's going to add movement and contrast that is going to bring the outdoors indoor again. So the plant in the back corner I'm going to make quite tall and the reason for that is because I want to accentuate the ceiling and if I'm going to be cladding it in wood and I'm going to be bringing textured paint all the way up to the ceiling and same with the wallpaper I want your eye to continue all the way up there as well well. So by scaling that tree to be quite large, it allows your eye to continue all the way up and then you notice the ceiling more. I am obsessed with this room. I love it so very much. I'm sure it's a lot to somebody else, but for me, what this room feels like is it's light and it's colorful and it's layered and it's cozy and anything that I'd serve on the table, whether it was a takeout pizza, whether it was Chinese food, whether it was, I don't know, like a giant potato gratin or a meatloaf, I think would look beautiful in this space and I would eat here. I love how it came out. I would definitely have home cooked meals, lots of soups, lots of wine. Just really warm up the space with good smelling food so that it's really just all senses are at play. Touch, feel, taste, see and it's a space where we really can disconnect. I really love this design. I would absolutely live in this room. I love to cook. I would be happy to serve anything, but there would definitely be a glass of wine. I see this room as being like somewhere in Napa, maybe somebody's home. It's classy, it is comfortable, it's fit for a young family, thanks to my oval-shaped table, and it's approachable. Oh, oh my God! God. Wait, wow. I love. 
Wait, what? Wait. Oh my god, look oh how my cute god. we are. Wait. Wait. Whoa, wait. Did we do the same thing? Wait, what? Wait, this is so <laughs> We all we did all something with the window. I love it. Oh my god, obsessed. So how did both of you end up deciding to open that wall out to the yard? So we called each other. I, we did. And we were like, are you going to do doors? Yeah, we're, let's do doors. <laughs> it just no. seemed like you needed it. I mean, before it was this like very strange windows. Yep. Remember there was like a little box there? Yeah. So I just got rid of it. Same. Because we can. Same. I, think I love your like, louvered doors. It's so pretty. And they twist around. I know. Yeah. They're so cool. Well, when I saw the setting, I looked at the, the yeah. landscape was the first thing that caught my mm -hmm. eye. And I thought it was the house was somewhere in the, on the countryside. Right. And I just really wanted to bring the outdoors indoor. So I think the doors were just kind yeah. of the first thing that was going to connect. Yeah. The interior to the exterior. It feels I like, love it. It. like I'm ready to go drink a glass of wine there. Okay, Naz, I want to know more about your windows and doors. Like, oh, how yes. did you come up with this? Well, I was in kind of like a Michael Gravesian postmodern moment when I was doing this, and I love the idea of like repeating the house shape all mm. over the place. Like I was super inspired by the ceiling line, yes. and I just wanted to create more little like baby dog house moments. <laughs> and I so basically here it's like not where my brain went when I saw those. <laughs> you know, and I, I love like it. this is a really good dog house. For yeah, kind of dogs. no, it is. This is like your little indoor greenhouse. Yeah, theoretically. Room. Yeah, because it's it. like, you know, there's like other ways to get outside in my vision of this pretend space. Yeah, um, when you're in here, you're not leaving. Yeah, when you're here, you're here. Um, <laughs> there was like a fake Olive Garden commercial where like an, a robot wrote it and it was like Olive Garden. When you're here, you're here. <laughs> is so, this your version of yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it's like so ludicrous. This is my Olive Garden. This is house. your Olive Garden. <laughs> yes. I mean, you did it better than Olive Garden. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> I am obsessed with your dining chairs. I love that they're all different and eclectic. How did you arrive at that? I really like to design with different chairs. Uh -huh. I think it's fun, especially the end chairs. So I took the color from the wallpaper and reupholstered the chairs in velvet. Wow. And then, um, my loss and fenning chairs. I love that. Love that. Them. <laughs> I love. Well, I love too the idea that you still have like heads of the table, but it's a circular table, which is kind of a chic mashup of the two <laughs> concepts, right? Like that's really yeah, good. for fun. And I love that you added the drapes because it softens the whole wall up a little bit. Yeah, that's so true. You're the it only really, one who did yeah, the window the, the treatment. Yeah. That was a last minute ad, actually. I felt I like that. this wall felt very plain mm -hmm. next to everything else. I'm like, well, I need something, so I added that, and I think it pulled it, the whole room together. It balances out everything nice. I I kind of want to pull some of your stuff and I'm like, wait, can I source from your guys' as well? <laughs> I know, <laughs> And not some stuff. <laughs> that should be our follow-up where we just like mix these I'm like, what can I source from yours? But the next assignment should be like, take everything from your, yeah. from each other know, and right? create a room. Yeah, I, I love that. I'm I taking your louver doors. <laughs> I'm not giving them up. <laughs> <laughs> Those you can't have. <laughs>